In this video, we're going to focus on geometry rotation in 3JS, and this is part of the 3JS tutorial. So what is geometry rotation? Well, basically, it's just the object itself that we want to rotate, and we will create it basically as an animation or an animate. So let's look at this, because this is really important, and this is what we call a function itself. So what happened here, we say here, this is the animate and this is a function that we'll call basically this but this is what we call a nameless function although it's not really entirely nameless because it has a constant but it is equal to a function and this function has a request animation frame and this means it will start to animate every time there's a frame and then what we want to do here is to rotate it to a certain direction here and then it will render and just to understand here, if you go in here and read this, because this is really a part that can be confusing, and this is very important to understand here. So if you read here, what we're going to do here, that's basically this part here. This here is basically the uh, rotation that we create. However, this here loops through it. So this is what we call a render loop or animate loop. As you can see here, because basically here we're not, well, let me read this here quickly. This is because we're not actually rendering anything yet. For for that, what we need is called a render or animate loop. Here it is. So what does this really do here? Basically, with this, it will animate every time a frame is every time there's a frame request, it will loop through it. And if you're very familiar, you get like 60 frames per second. It's like on a TV, it's very common. That's right. It says your typical screen means 60. Uh, times per second because there's 60 frames per second every time you get a new frame it will calculate and do something basically it will loop through this again and again and here is something that might be interesting because they say here why don't we just use set interval the thing is we could but request animation has a number of advantages perhaps the most important one is that it pauses when the user navigates to another browser tab hence not wasting the precious processing power and battery life all right, I will explain to you later on, or I will show you exactly what I'm talking about here. So what happens here is that we put this here between, this is the rotation, X and rotation Y, and we will explore this a bit more. So it will render every single time. So it will keep on redrawing the animation based on the frame, because it needs to calculate every time what happens, and we have it will turn it like, uh, like what is a one percent it will have a rotation of one percent consistently of here so if you look at this we have this here consistently rotates if i refresh here you can see again and what we really want to do here is the following let's say we want to to oh sorry uh let's say we want to change this here or to understand what happened here we can do here console.law open up this and then here we say here animate let's grab this here you can see now with the frames are starting to be counted change that refresh all right now what happens is the frames are counting up one by one and basically here every second there will be probably like one uh frame if i'm not mistaken or or sorry it's 60 so it's probably 60 se uh, one second equals 60 frames so this goes quite fast however to understand what we're doing here is the rotation here so you might say what does this rotation really mean so let's look at this because you can see here we had this before with the x y and z why don't we do the same here let's change this or comment this out save this then refresh and now if you look at it you will say wait a minute the rotation here is going from up to down Right, and you might be confused with that. I'll show you later on why. I'll explain to you why. We save this here, and then rotate from left to right. And if we do even the Z, uh, well, let's change this to a Z index or the Z uh, axis, and then it rotates like this. All right. So what's going on here? Because you might say, wait, didn't you say X equals left to right? y equals uh, top to bottom and z equals well the depth well this one here i'll explain and these two are probably more confusing than this one this one might be so so let's look at the depth first the z that we have here so basically how it works is the following you must imagine the z is index is the depth the depth means going basically from here 
all deep inside. Right now, we're not able to view that. So there should be here like a spoke or like a line or like a, just imagine like a, a metal, metal stick piercing through it like a barbecue. And I guess that would be the best one to, to imagine, a barbecue stick. We we'll pierce it into this cube, and this cube co controls the depth. So this here is basically the depth uh, z axis. Yes, that's the depth z axis, and it rotates. Remember, we're talking about rotation here. Rotation means turning, but it spins around within the axis, and this axis is the z end axis. So this explains the z turning all right so this one might say okay yeah, this is i believe but what happened then if we do for example y let's go back here all right so the y has a metal stick like a i guess a barbecue stick going in but then it goes in from the center from down or up all right meaning that it will spin to the left to the right because the metal stick is in the center from down to up so this explains the spinning from left to right into the z sorry into the y index or the y rotation because remember we're talking about rotation here not about uh how it it, it measures up it doesn't look at the measurement but it, it talks at the rotation so it rotates within that uh, structure all right so i hope that makes sense so then x is the same because now in x what happens Remember, the x-axis is from left to right. So it's, there's a stick going from the left, or a metal barbecue stick, piercing towards this cube from the left to right, and then it spins from up to down, because that's the only way how you can rotate or spin the item. If you do a negative spin, you get the exact same, but in the opposite pos position. So if I do this, as you can see here now, same rota rotation mode, but the only thing is that it goes in the opposite direction. And as you can see here, it starts to have your frames consistently. So this con controls basically your spinning. So if you want to have a real unique spinning, so if you have this, you can do here Y, and then you do here X. What happens then is here, basically here you have a double spinning. You have one that rotates uh, left to right, and another one from up to down in the same motion. All right, and so what would happen if you would spin another one here for the z, for the z axis, save this, then you get a multiple spinning rotation here, as you can see here, which is uh, for me very hard to explain right now. I can't even imagine how it, how it rotates, but as you can see, it rotates far unusual as normal. All right, so this is basically what we're talking about the animation frame because just every frame it has a rotation in here and it rotates means spinning around the the axis basically where it's where that's connected towards it all right 